Hey everybody, welcome to Don't Make Me Come Back There. We are a funny podcast about family. My name is Dustin Secrets. I'm a stand-up comedian, the host Whoa. of the Four Mention Podcast. I am jacked up on caffeine and I'm drinking more. This is Woo. this is a back in the time episode for you guys, but Melissa and right. Andy and I, we are stacking them. Mm-hmm. Stacking them and racking them and banking them and stanking them. them. Tanking them and stanking them and ranking it. All of them. This is our third Stacked episode today, yeah. and I have one protein bar and a few cups of coffee. Mel's got a few Gibraltars in her, which is just it's espresso. My, my second Gibraltar. And oh, my gosh. I had about five uh, pretzel chips in me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like I could vibrate through this wall right now. I could face <laughs> through it like the... Like mm-hmm. the flash. Mm-hmm. I'm um Yeah. I'm buzzing and luzzing and dozen <laughs> a dozen buzzing is what I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need some food is what I, I need. You're pretty hot too. Whew. But, you know oh, you're so you started out pretty hot. Fashion forward here. Huh? Lock the door. Fashion before uh passion. No. <laughs> <laughs> fashion before fashion. <laughs> it's gonna be one of these guys. <laughs> If you're looking for like one of our like most structured episodes, this ain't it. I don't even know what date you're hearing this. I don't know how to explain this to you. 14th? Um, It gets hot in December in the afternoons here in Southern California. In Southern California, yeah. And I have a long sleeve shirt on. Champagne problems. Yes. Right about when the tree starts to get real dry. Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) This is a fire hazard. So thanks for tuning in. Everybody, Uh, if you're interested in uh, coming to a live show, please do. For the for the love of all things, what is today's date? Where, you don't even come, just buy tickets. They, yeah, I'd like you to come. Actually, it would be okay. particularly do a late show. If you can make a late show, please do. Mm-hmm. These, mm-hmm. Phoenix, uh, I mean, if, if if everything projects the way I think it's going to, the two early shows in Phoenix sold out. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then the two early shows averaged thirty people. The late shows. The late shows. Yeah. Sorry. So. It's, Anyways, it's, hope, a bro- it's a broken model. Cleveland was it's, looking uh, similar for us. Uh, I think, what date is this coming out? Does anybody know? Oh, um, yeah, I can tell you. There's no way we could know. Um, how would they know? How would they know? Uh, I'm, I think December 13th. December, so, today's December 13th in your life, which in means Columbus. I'm going to be in Columbus tonight. Yeah, uh, That show might be sold out already, so if you didn't buy tickets and to that. You should have. Pittsburgh Pitts- and Buffalo. Oh, you're doing the Pittsburgh and Buffalo for the rest of the week, and then Indy. And then December, mm-hmm. I'm going to give you the actual dates. Because it's getting time. January 13th and 14th, I'm going to be in Brooklyn at Union Hall. The 18th through 20th, I'm going to be in Kansas City. The 21st, I'm going to be in St. Louis. The 25th through the 27th, I'm going to be in Philly. February 1st through 3rd, Portland. February 8th through 10th, D.C. February 22nd through 24th, Grand Rapids. March 7th, Spokane. March 10th, two shows at the Crocodile in Seattle. (sighs) And then we've got other dates we're adding in between then. we got a Syracuse on sale soon. we got a Fort Collins on sale mm-hmm. soon. Uh, but on sale right now for June, we have Naples, Tampa, Dania Beach, San Diego, Nashville. I am lightheaded. Uh, let's get going, everybody. <laughs> um, Do you want this water? Are those ours? Yeah. Oh, oh I got They are. Them. No. Here. But they are. No. Oh, my I, gosh. We will all share. We will all yeah. share. We'll all share our water. Your water is mm-hmm. my water. Sue water is me water. Ooh, okay. <laughs> what? This what happens when you take Spanish in nine weeks. Nine weeks. Uh, Espanol intensivo. Uh, we've talked about it, I think, on the pod <laughs> before. Uh, I'm not I'm not a bright man, uh, but I did graduate college, but the last thing that I did is I had to get a language. Uh, and I was uh, like working at a church at the time, and I was like, I should take Greek. That'd be helpful. And then I'd made it four days of Greek, and I was like, no Greek. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's all Greek to me. <laughs> a college quarter to learn Greek. That's well, that's you would have tough. had to do it the whole year, you know. But Greek one hundred and one or whatever, and I did not. It was like no, it's a quarter system, right? It's but a, you, but I would have had to take three quarters of it. Correct. So that, that's a hard way to learn a language. I walked in in on high the, school. You could take a whole year. Yeah, and I walked you know? in, and everyone already knew the alphabet, and I was behind. Yeah, and I mm-hmm. was like, I hmm, alpha. And Omega. Those are the two I know. And Omega. If it's the beginning and the end. I can tell you what a couple of the big Beta male. The yeah. <laughs> I can tell you what a couple of the the uh I can tell you what uh, doxa means because there's a if there's a if there's a church in the area with this name, I know that vocab word. <laughs> Numa Soma. I know these ones. But anyways, 
So the last thing that I did was I mm-hmm. took uh, Spanish, much more useful, but they had a thing called Espanol Intensivo, where you would just take a full year's worth of Spanish in nine weeks. So you would do mm-hmm. three and a half hours of classwork and then three hours of homework a day. You did six hours of Spanish. And I was like, I can do this for nine weeks. And the entire quarter I got between an 83 and an 88 on every test. I just was the definition of an average student and graduated. That's yep. what it takes. So yep. me, water is Sue water. Hmm. Agua. No, it's water. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys, we added Which a. Th- tough. We created a. We, I mean, you guys, the the fans, the patrons, the good people who are backseaters of this podcast, uh, uh, created yeah. a Facebook fan group, uh, which you mm-hmm. should join. There's a mm-hmm. link here in the comments. In the comp, gosh, that's going to be hard. Um, show notes. Here show, we go. show notes. Show notes. There's a link yep. in the show notes. Link in the show notes. You're going to want to check that out. You're going to go click that. You're going to go join that. And you know what? This is where I'm going to interrupt you guys. Mm-hmm. I'm going to interrupt you guys because I'm so thankful for our Facebook friends. Who have sent us a little gift for Christmas. What? For real? Really? For real. People sent us okay. a gift? Someone has sent you a gift. From the so Facebook group? we can fan have group? our next session of Let's Ranch. Oh my gosh! Oh, oh my gosh! Let's Ranch. Let's Ranch. Oh, this is fantastic <laughs> news. Oh. oh. Christmas came early. Who sent this? I'm not going to say. Why? Because they, they asked to be anonymous. Anonymous? To collectively share in the joy oh of the community. Oh, my. Even a little Christmas. Oh, my. Uh, Christmas this Christmas is, Christmas this is, this is legitimately oh cool. I like gosh, this. I like on the tree? Okay. Yeah. Dead center for now. <laughs> oh, my. I, you know we're getting hungry. I need food. I, <laughs> here we go. Oh, what's this? Is this ranch? Take a look at that. Favorite lip balm? <laughs> oh, my god. Hold that up for the camera. We got a... Sorry, sorry. I can't read and upside down. Oh, let's we got a lip balm and a keychain. Oh my gosh. Skincare moisturizer. Yes. Wow. So we have our daughter's getting this in her stocking. We gotta get into this. We got some <laughs> ran- we got some Andy Caps uh ranch fries right here. I, I those sound pretty good. What we don't need to try is the David Ranch uh, sunflower seeds. Uh, yeah. I've had those a million times. Uh, they're delightful. But this one, I'm so curious. Bugles got in the ranch game, huh? Hey, they, they did it. Whoa. Oh, I, my. I like the name Bugles. Yep. Yeah. Right. Are you going to tear into these? Yeah. You, you're you picky about your sunflower seeds anyways. I am. Yeah. I always buy you the wrong kind. It's yeah. so funny I, I that I've, I've publicly said how much I don't like ranch, and everyone's like, well, try this. <laughs> but have you tried? Okay, we should do this together. Do this together. Here All we right. go. All right. Andy, get a bugle. Yep. Oh, we're doing bugles first. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing goes better with ranch than coffee. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All <laughs> okay. right. Get a little handful. Hidden like. Valley Bugle Ranch. Taste test. Here we go. There I like go. a bugle. Well, before we do this, I like a normal bugle. Yeah. I like the I, I, nice little texture. Yeah. You know, like they, the way they kind of sit around in yeah. your teeth for a bit. Yeah. They <laughs> All almost, day. They're almost like a cereal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. away from the mic. Oh, it's so oh I love them. <laughs> I love them. It tastes like a vanilla wafer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just like a tangy. Oh, oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, it gets so tangy at the end. Oh, let me wash that down with a, a black cup of coffee. <laughs> now, to me, I'm not really, I'm getting a hint of ranch. Really? This is delicious. Yeah, there's way more sugar than ranch. Oh, oh, we have the These best are nice. fans. These you are, are really nice. the best fans. I'm pe- comedian, <laughs> people say that a lot. You are the actual best. It'd be great if you guys could come to a late show sometime, but I get it. We'll have um, bugles there. Okay, there now this is going to be different. This is Andy Caps Taste the Oven Bake Ranch Ranch Fries. This looks like a local. He's from Chicago. This looks like something you can't get outside of Chicago, but I could be. Did you hold it up to the camera? Yeah, we did that one okay. already. So right. you take a few ranch fries. Oh, I'll take a few ranch fries. Our kids are going to love these. I don't know if the bugles are going to make it home, though. Melissa's going to snack mid-episode. Now, do you remember those veggie chips? It's kind of what it reminds me of. Veggie I mean, veggie Oh, yeah, there's veggie straws, you mean. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're not healthy, but... I'm, it, they almost, it's got like a Funyun. Yeah, here we go. Thing going okay, on. Here, we go. here we go. Dive in. Mm. 
Mm. I'm Team Bugles. Ranch, it just, it tastes sour in other forms like that. You know, it tastes- I've never had ranch that sour before. Yeah. That's just bad ranch. <laughs> it's like a vinegar or yeah. That's a, a lime. Vinegar. Oh. Almost, I'm getting notes of like, lime. It's getting notes of the, lime. <laughs> it's more like a salt and vinegar chip yeah. more than anything. Mm -hmm. Well, let me wash that down with a bugle. <laughs> yeah. These bugles are fire. They're so good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Thank you so much, fans. Just what we needed. <laughs> just yeah. a, that changed the whole direction of this podcast. I'm still pretty lightheaded, if, but if you, I should chew. Um, if you need a white elephant gift this holiday season, that's a very good you one. You need to get this yeah. ranch ornament. I can't um, wait to see that. Anyone, everyone, yeah. and anyone and everyone needs this ranch ornament yeah. in their homes. It's yeah. very good. That's so. yeah. That's gonna stay here, but it's gonna be tempting to take it home. We'll take it home as soon as we record our last one for. December. So wow, thank you so much. The other thing that this Facebook group of ours, they listen. I'm pro democracy, and they created a poll of whether or not Mel should share the booty bump story. Mm -hmm. And the the origins of this, if you don't remember, is we were seeing Leanne Morgan at mm -hmm. uh, at the Balboa here in San Diego. Yeah, and Mel will tell the story, but. There was a booty bump incident from some other fan, and yes. Mel told this story to me. I she know. told it to Leanne. I know. And I just kept saying this is not a great story, and this I is know. not podcast worthy. But I, I think know. I've I think I've created a mythology to this story. It, it has gotten grander than it is. But um, here we go. Because but, we're pro people, because yep. we're pro democracy, because it's the holidays, <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting. Now, it is Giving Tuesday uh, in our timeline here. Uh -huh. I, I think the baristas are bumping the music because they're closing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's great. We're getting it's fine. extra. It will... It's like their third Ooh. podcast today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. So well, hit us, Mel. Tell us okay. the tell tales of the Balboa so, Theater. Now, as you know, we are the Balboa Theater is very old. The seats are very small. Right. Um, it's got a lot of old elements in there. Let's paint it's the picture. It's all part here. of the vibe. It's a Thursday night, downtown San Diego. We're at the old Balboa Theater. Yeah. Small seats. Leanne downtown. Morgan's crowd is there. Yeah. Walkers and strollers. She connected that group. Mm -hmm. That's who's, you know, that's, that's her demo. Everybody's excited. Everyone's pretty nice. Yeah. You can very kind of nice tell guys. when you go to a concert or you can kind of tell the demo, mm -hmm. you know, that you're dealing with. And, um... We sit down. We're on the end. We just sit down, right? We're getting settled. Um, we have a drink. No got, cup holders. We got some tickets. Thank um, you so much, Leanne. And a couple comes, and we stand up, but we should have moved out of the row. Right. But we didn't. Which is not assumed. You never assume someone needs to uh, no. move out of the row. Um. And so we're holding our drink. We're smashed against our chair, and we're we're doing this, mm -hmm. you know. And I get kind of like bounce <laughs> like she and gave you a hit you mean like like a it, hip like a hip check like yeah a, you got yeah. you got hip checked and granted i could have we could have gotten out of our row but that's never but expected it was so what only on an airplane do you need to get out of your row that you're right and it was unexpected to me i was not ready for that uh -huh. and i have a full drink and i'm like whoa it's mom's and, night out um and so it just tickled me. Mm -hmm. it, I was very tickled mm -hmm. that the woman that pursued- Literally, she tickled her. She butt booty bumped her and then turned around and said, dicky, dicky, dicky. <laughs> the woman that sat next to me, like hip checked me or whatever you yeah. want to call it. And I didn't play a lot of contact sports. I was very surprised by this and it tickled me. And then we get backstage and you would think, I hang out with a lot of comics yeah. post show. Mm -hmm. You think I would just- Boom, that was so funny. I loved your special. This is my second yeah. time seeing you, Leanne. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. But she derailed me and my conversation skills, which are lacking. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just, you all know I shoot from the hip. I'm silly. Yeah. I don't pay attention as I sh often as I should. And so she well, goes. You're a little, uh, I'm a, you're a little, little space flighty. kitty. Yeah. I'm a little flighty. Yeah. I was having a fun night. Yeah. I'm fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Leanne, yeah. Leanne. Um, so we get backstage. We're the last in line. 
And Leanne's daughter is there. And Leanne looks at her daughter and goes, look at this cute little thing. She says that to me. And so all the things, I, the good things I had planned to say, the compliments, yeah. the like, I'm a huge fan of your work. Great to see you again, Leanne. Go out the window. And little thing reminds me of how I got booty bumped in mm-hmm. the lobby or in, in the seats. And I tell that story to Leanne. And she's not interested. No. This is her last fan no. mean greet. Yeah. And then we go on to have a normal conversation. Yeah, it Thankfully, bombed. Thankfully, bombed. Uh, the yeah. story bombed. I'm not about getting laughs from comics. I was just being my random self. <laughs> Which is what's very endearing Telling about a you. random story yeah, yeah. without yeah. a good punchline. Yeah, and... Melissa is ready, shoot, aim. That's and how she goes just, conversationally. I, I am not a comic. I don't have that in my brain. I'm... Well, it's why you're fun. You're I, very I'm unpredictable. Just silly and goofy, and I find humor in dumb things. And the booty bump just was really funny to me. What's important so. is that uh, it's important <laughs> to you, and it's a funny story to you. And more important is that our people wanted that story. <laughs> and right. I get it, because we are a publicly owned and traded company, and you are our stockholders, <laughs> particularly our patrons. If you don't know what Patreon is, by the way, did we do our Zoom hang yet? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. It was a we great, did. best Zoom hang ever. Patreon. It- 10 I'm out so, of 10. 10 out of 10. Yeah. 10 bingo dingoes. Mm-hmm. So this is our last episode before that. Uh, no, we do one more Christmas. And that's got, why we, we have the Christmas soundtrack time. that uh, closing baristas below us have. Yeah. But Anyways. thank you so much to the Facebook group for standing in my corner that you yeah. wanted to hear the booty bumps. And for sending ranch mm-hmm. goodies. A ranch care package. Delightful. Delightful. Yeah. My favorite thing is regional snacks. Yeah? It really is. I Regional snacks are just absolutely what, what are your thing. favorite regional snacks? like? And, and I think it's because sometimes when you do gigs, they'll give you like a little basket. You love when I get a basket snacks. and I come home and you're like, these are, these are the best yogurt covered <laughs> pretzels in Maine. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's really fun. It is fun. Yeah. Well, that's something and, and you normally I do have. I like to enjoy it with like a group. Like everybody yeah. take a pretzel. Well, I, I, it's just a fun thing. That's the thing that we like yeah. to do is mm-hmm. just to come home and be like, this is what we got, everybody. Well, what I like about our family is it's never assumed that you get a full thing. Like, this is my bag of chips and nobody else can have it. It's like, right. everyone take one. Yeah. And so, like, you brought back two pastries from Seattle mm-hmm. from Pike Place Market. I didn't and think you would have put that on silent after the first time. Good God, the Don't lack worry. of the lack of professionalism. <laughs> this is, this story's going nowhere. This never uh, happened. This never <laughs> happened with Stephen English. <laughs> but we all started dividing. We didn't record it in person. But anyways, uh, we all started dividing up two pastries. Yes, and I think when you're in a big family or you just enjoy things together, you're like it's never assumed you're getting a whole pastry or something. Yeah, you're gonna divide that up and have a bite. Um. Anyone, so I don't know why. Anyone. Yeah, no. If if someone if someone assumes they're getting in a whole piece of banana bread, then I'm like, oh, you were an only child. <laughs> you will. We will divvy that up in whatever way Dad tears it. <laughs> it's not going to be even, by the way. Yeah. Whatever the bi- whatever banana the bread. biggest slice is, he'll get. Whatever the second biggest one is. Mom will get, and the third biggest slice will be his favorite child in that moment. Because when people are like, "Do you have a favorite kid?" I'm like, "It's rotating." Uh, I got a lazy Susan of favorite kids, depending on general gratefulness and kindness. Right now, now talking about tearing up snacks, uh... <laughs> bugle me. <laughs> <laughs> My dad used to cut um, peanut M M&M and M packs. He would tear them in half. He- you would get a half peanut M and M bag. <laughs> You're also, and then the other. This is my favorite. No, this is my favorite Dave Holland thing think that he this did. This was weird. I didn't think this was weird because it's all I knew. You guys would go skiing. When my dad was in charge of feeding us, he would bring carrot sticks and Snickers bars. Mm-hmm. Snickers, a lot of protein for being a candy bar, so they say. And then he would cut them in half with his van keys. <laughs> Did you guys get your tetanus shots this year? Good, because Dad's using the Dodge Caravan key. And that thing could cut. Yeah. <laughs> and anyways, when you said snacks, so th- yeah, I don't know. It's just this is how you grew up. 
<laughs> yeah, you're lucky you get any piece of banana bread at all. Mm. Uh, half a Snickers bar. <sighs> yep. It's, uh, anyway, you know. Anyway, I've derailed the conversation. We went from booty bump. We to- were never railed in this conversation. <laughs> no, we were never on the on the rails in the in the first place. So it's a quest for a new form of travel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I, it is easy, it's very easy for me. It's very easy for me to not eat the snacks that are packaged. Yeah. Like in bringing those home to the family. What's hard for me is to say no to a Cinnabon when I'm in an airport. When I show up to a Cinnabon airport hungry. Well, the whole yeah. airport smells like Cinnabon. It's, yeah. If you, yeah, that smell is yeah, no, contagious. I, but you can't, you will have like, you will be a mess. You'll I, be wrecked if you ate a Cinnabon. I look at a Cinnabon, I consider eating a Cinnabon the same way that I think about cheating on my wife. And that I would be like, this would be a great 20 minutes that would ruin my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is worth it, but. It's it's like a stick of butter. Yeah. Yeah. I can have a really enjoyable 20 minutes. Let's be honest. Three minutes. (laughs) (laughs) I'm eating that Cinnabon quickly. Uh, And then I'll be like, what have I done? (laughs) I have to call my wife. (laughs) I know, and I used to make cinnamon rolls on Christmas. I know, but anyway, dairy the evidence, dairy, Smell yeah, like cinnamon. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> She's gonna know. What's that cinnamon sticky white stuff on your shirt? It's cinnamon. It's it's you know, it's cinnamon. I knew it. I smell like sugar. <laughs> sticky hands. <laughs> You're covered in it. I can <laughs> I can see it on your. <laughs> I caught you white handed. <laughs> Your hands are sticky. There's cinnamon on your shirt. <laughs> Me and the kids are leaving. <laughs> you smell like the mall. <laughs> what, you get Wetzel's while you're all gone too? <laughs> if you got Wetzel's without me. I would never. It is over. I would never. <laughs> uh, I would pay $100 to eat Wetzel's right now. I am delusionally tired here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I actually did have one topic that I wanted to get I to. I am melting like a cinnamon roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we hit 45 minutes on this podcast, it's going to be a miracle today. I have a stranger danger for you to fill the time. Oh, good, more coffee. That'll yeah. help. That'll help <laughs> stop. Let me just finish this. <laughs> That'll help stop the shakes. The problem and the solution. Yeah. What time school get out? 150, 15? 132. 132. Okay. Um... So, Stranger Danger, a uh, couple weekends ago, I'm in the U District, I'm at a ramen restaurant with my daughters. We're sitting down, we're eating, it's fairly quiet, it's a good environment, all right? It's nice. Uh, Claire gets some dumplings, Gloria and I get some ramen, everybody's happy. Mm-hmm. Table sits down next to us. Wide open restaurant, they sit down. Sometimes these smaller restaurants, I'm talking table is here to here, very close. Mm-hmm. Um, couple work friends. Co-workers having a lunch together. Very eccentric, loud man is losing his mind about some co-worker he's complaining about. You will never guess what job he's complaining about, though. I had no idea. Okay. He, come, he goes- I'm intrigued. He goes, Kathy is just in too deep. She cannot do this job. Kathy, it's a joke. I love her. She's nice. She's trying her best, but she's underqualified and she's incompetent. Kathy cannot do this job. And the other friend's like, yeah, no, I agree. She's not doing great. He's like, it's worse than that. She cannot do that job. Kathy cannot do this job. Kathy, she kept doing it. Kathy Kathy is incapable. (laughs) Kathy cannot. Kathy cannot do this job. She's she's just terrible for business. It's awful. Pause. He takes a bite of his ramen, slurps his ramen. We need a new funeral director. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, what is Kathy not doing? She's not doing a good job playing people's funerals. <laughs> She's not killing it. <laughs> She's not killing it. She's not. <laughs> Incredible. Oh no. Listen, we need to terminate Kathy like these. <laughs> like these. It's so funny because I I did get sympathetic to him all of a sudden because you're like, 
you do have to do a good job planning people's funerals. Yep. As pe- as that needs like to a, go smoothly. As yep. someone who has officiated weddings, mm-hmm. there's a couple things that you got to like crush and you got to do a good job. <laughs> Kathy cannot. Kathy is incompetent. She's... <laughs> no. And our poor daughters are like, it was the comedic timing of, <laughs> and then and then it got uh, the woman who was with him was Japanese, and then I think he caught that we were able to understand what this very clearly Caucasian man was saying, and then started speaking to her in fluent Japanese. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, it was incredible. And I was like, this is remarkable. <laughs> this guy's got a lot going on. Did I think you still he- hear Kathy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do a voice. I almost did a voice to try to keep the character going. But I did not because it's the modern era. Oh, my gosh. Wow. We need a new funeral director. Rama was great, though. And then it kind of, it was so funny because he was like also like kind of like he was still a boomer because mm-hmm. apparently the place had like been broken into the night before. Oh. And then he was like, this city's a mess. Everywhere's getting broken into. And then he would go back into Japanese. <laughs> And then he would start complaining about Kathy, and I was like, I'm not getting a word in with me and my daughters here, because I cannot compete with this. You expect him to be like, what do you get yeah. for Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I do have one other thing that I want to talk about in regards to us being a funny podcast about family. Okay. <clears throat> um, <laughs> how do you like talk about this? Um, I think the thing that, like, I consider myself a very patient parent, yeah. But what I'm least patient about is hearing my kids tell me about their dreams. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean their ambitions. I mean their mm-hmm. actual dreams from the night. Because what happens every morning is some kid tells a tall tale yes. of a dream. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. then it becomes who had the craziest dream competition. Yeah. And they just try and top each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It keep- More elaborate. I was on a football field too. <laughs> In my dream. <laughs> but. Yeah. But then Freddie Frasberry showed up and I was getting chased. We, I was playing against Freddie Frasberry on this football team. Yeah. And then I got struck by lightning and then the football field turned into Skittles. And, and then the cloud monster came after me yeah. in my dream. And, and you're like, it, it's that meme that's like a, an escape room, but your kid's talking about Fortnite. <laughs> And it's like an yeah. escape room, but your yeah. kid's talking about their dream. Yeah. And by the it, second or third one, cool. I want to quote them and be like, "I smell cap." I know, because I mean, it is it is humorous, but it's just very tedious because they're just literally making it up as they go. Yeah. Like so obviously, and yeah, I'm like, you guys gotta like we've keep it I know these are dreams, so kind of anything goes, but you have yeah. to keep them a little more based in reality. Like, mm-hmm. if I can predict what you're gonna say next, <laughs> you're like, that was a cartoon episode. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> so the other the other day, my six year old uh, came in the room. It's not even the last night, actually. Yeah. Speaking of impatient dreams, mm-hmm. he's like real sad about it. And like, Dad, can can we not go to Target? For a little bit, so I don't have to see the dog. <laughs> oh no! The target dog? <laughs> yes, because uh, I was the other night. He was chasing me in my <laughs> dream, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry, son. There's no way we can't go to Target. <laughs> <laughs> There's no. We are a modern family. Face There's your no, peers. Yeah, yeah. We're actually gonna go right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put your clothes on. It's 9 p.m. I just remembered I need something. <laughs> oh, man. Target run. Middle-aged, being a middle-aged parent, I am just so bored of domestic life. You're bored? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you just do three days of laundry? Because I did. Yeah. Yeah. Can we be bored together <laughs> just for the sake of the bit so it's entertaining content for the... Can okay. you just say me too? Yeah, me too. <laughs> Can you? I'm kidding. Instead of it's, a joke. it's not a competition, you're supposed to go me too, so we can clip this into internet content. Ah, okay. Okay, so ready for Frankenstein? <laughs> okay. I'm so bored of m- domestic life, and then you're gonna go oh, me too or something like that. Ready? Yeah. Go. I'm so bored of domestic life. 
Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst. I'm the worst actress. I'm sorry. Ah, this all stays in for the pot. This is very funny. <laughs> Bugle me. Bugle me. <laughs> middle aged domestic life. It m- m- middle aged domestic life as a parent. It was everything that you've worked for, and you are so grateful. But it becomes so tedious and well. I boring. think just like. Having kids, and we have a 16 and a half year old, so we've been doing the same things for 16 and yeah. a half years. Yeah, which is like, did you shower? Did you brush your teeth? Are you ready for bed? Did you eat your dinner? Did you have enough water? When's your next physical? Like, it's like every <laughs> single day. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. How do I get into Roblox? How do I, yeah. <laughs> He'll be like, I have this new thing on my shoulder. And I'm like, well, save it for your doctor's appointment next week. I'm not making another one. Like, I can't. Yeah, your home is a pharmacy. Your home is a restaurant. You're You're going like, yeah, that's just just sinuses. Just go to bed. You're fine. You go to school. You took the whole month of November off. You're going to school tomorrow. Yeah. I regret having kids. (laughs) I really (laughs) know. I like (laughs) It's like we paid for volleyball the whole month of November, but yeah. you haven't had a practice yet. Yeah. And it's the 28th. So I think I was scammed yeah. into signing you up for this league because I'm out a lot of money. I paid $400 <laughs> to get up at 6 a.m. on a Saturday to go watch these three girls on this team not be able to serve. <laughs> <laughs> just... Oh, it hit the net again. Oh, look, the team with two good servers won. <laughs> and we paid for it. And, and I'm grateful. To pay and for I'll continue it. to pay for it. And those kids will get better. And that's part of it. But that doesn't yeah. mean this is entertaining. Yeah. And or, I, why, you know why do I feel guilty if I'm on my phone? Uh, my kid's not in the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will get on my phone when my kid's not in the game. Yeah. I got to check in on things. What's a, okay, what's a stronger feeling? The pride of when your kid's the best player or the embarrassment of when your kid's the worst player? What's the stronger emotion? Oh, no. Well, oof. Because oh. <laughs> I've had all of the above. Um, You try and re, 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 uh, frame it. Mm-hmm. You reframe it by going... Um, my kid's learning a lot of lessons. <laughs> when your kid sucks. Gonna the be, thing, the gonna be better yeah. on long term. Yeah. From yeah. Having lost on this better team <laughs> than being really good on a bad team. Uh-huh. Yep. So we're learning life lessons. If they're really good, then they're not in a high enough level. <laughs> then they should have been moved they up. They should have been moved up. <laughs> it's it's gotta be a challenge. It's got to be a challenge. And you're like, no. I mean, the things that you tell yourself to survive in those moments. I know. You're. Like, they're like, can I get an acai bowl? Not, not, after, that per- <laughs> not after that performance. Mm-mm. Winners get $15 yeah. acai bowl. No, no. If you had landed that back ha- handspring, <laughs> then maybe you'd get an acai bowl on the way home. But Jamba Juice is for winners. <laughs> I mean, what's going on? That's, that's you. That's, that's, that's you. you. I was like, there's no way. That's I hilarious. Yeah. Um, I have, we've all been there with the kid that strikes out or, yeah, I don't know. It Actually, I don't mind when my kid's bad. Yeah. Because everyone there needs to take this less seriously. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. I'm like, guess what? We all got a life lesson. My like, kid will be the settle second. Settle down. Yeah. It's like seventh. Seven-year-old, you know, basketball. Yeah. Like, we're not going to the NBA. Yeah, I can't stand a parent that takes youth sports too seriously. Uh, we have parents in the stands, and they're like, oh, ah, oh, ah. And they, they talk to their kid every play. Yeah. And you're like, they have a coach. Yeah. Also, they can't hear you. Also, like, you're supposed to be a relaxed presence yeah. in their life. Yeah. And if you're like, the yeah, whole, the whole game, like one, you're stressed out, two, you're stressing everybody else out, and your kid, and they have to. The whole point of these youth sports is for them to have stress mm-hmm. and work through it. Yeah, and, yeah, 
Go ahead. I'll you say, know? speaking of, oh, yeah, uh, I just I just got a text message this week from this story from a while ago about where I hit a kid, like, on the on the while I was pitching at, t- at baseball. Yeah. The dad. Yeah. Had messaged the coaches this week and been like, can't believe he threw the ball still at my kid. Like, was making it like he he still was con- yeah. trying to convince the other coach I did it intentionally. And you're like, how did he know? Right. <laughs> How did he know? Well, and see, that's that's so messed up yeah. because you're both volunteer coaches. Yeah. And why are you getting mad at someone being involved in their kid's life? Totally. Right. And right. the lives of why nine other I children. Why ever intentionally hit your kid with yeah. the ball? I'd hit you with the ball. I know. I could <laughs> get but like, yeah. But yeah. the whole point is you can't take everything that personally. And it's sport. Yeah. Kids get hit with balls. Like, it's, it, yeah. it's not, you know... You got to assume the best. Yeah, when I see, when I see a parent getting too worked up at a youth sports event, I just go, "I'm sorry you're unhappy with your life." Yeah. Truly. I'm like, "I'm sorry that you have bad balance. I'm sorry that things didn't work out for you. I'm sorry you hate your job. I'm sorry your dad never said he was proud of you." Like, I do start to feel bad now, but then I'm also like, "They've got they've just there needs to be a quicker way to eject these parents from these things. There needs <laughs> yeah. you got to yeah. be able to get them out of here." I eject seats maybe. Like yeah. uh, mm-hmm. a little uh, cockpit. They just jet. need a hot car nap. They need a hot car yeah. nap. That's a callback to a previous episode, but yes. <laughs> but I know it's all blurring together here. It is all blurring together. But um, it just is not that important. Yeah. You know? Fine. it's Especially when you make those parents the coaches. Well, it's off, a lot of times it is. A lot yeah. of time that's the yeah. ones who want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're already looking at you and your homeschooled family and your flower named children, <laughs> and they're like, "Here we go. Here These we hippies go. are rolling in." You bring the bunnies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah don't put a bass. Us. I've heard he has like seventy-five animals back on the compound. <laughs> <laughs> uh. uh. But at least they're at the game. But, but here's <laughs> that's what they say they to me. The speaker, yeah. And Brandy Carlisle on the speaker. Yeah. At a baseball here's, game. Here's the thing though, because uh, my daughter had a birthday her birthday party, and it was a couple of friends from two different sports she's played, and a couple of friends from school. And I do think that the 14 year olds who have extracurriculars are in a better place. Like mm-hmm. for life, yeah. I you don't know? know that their parents are, but no. But I, but I know that if they were, if they actually, if those stressed out sports parents stepped back, right? They and re- cooled out, like relaxed. Like teens need structure and routine, right? And they don't get to work. They they don't get to mow your lawn and yeah. babysit anymore. We don't we don't have those kind of roles in society. So now yeah. it's travel sports. And um, they're better off. The kids are better off, like being stressed in sports than like left on their phones at home. Yeah, you know. And so, yeah, it's still better. That stressed out sport parent parenting them is better than just l- laying in bed on their phone. Yeah, all weekend. Yeah, if, if for no I, other reason that they get to realize that their parents aren't perfect. And that's about the age that you realize. Yeah. That. Yeah, 13, 14, you're like, these guys, yeah. they got some problems. <laughs> yeah, you're like, how was the game? You're like, well, my dad got ejected. <laughs> but I did get an acai bowl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's tough. It is, I think you're right. I just, uh, there's so many, there's so many strong emotions as a parent. Mm-hmm. There's intense grief there's intense passion, there's intense joy, there's intense anger, and it kind of all comes out at the youth sport event. Yeah, and it, and you can't always control the timing of that, because you might get really mad at the coach. I mean, you for can like, if you're a mature adult. <laughs> no, but yeah. like, I guess what triggers it? Yeah. I see parents who are like, are irate because like the December practice yeah. schedule is now yet. Instability. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you cut off my kid, or yeah. you hit my kid on purpose. Like it's, it's there, but you don't know what's going to trigger it. That's the exciting. Part. Yeah, that is a little bit exciting. Come yeah. To think of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys are being very sympathetic here, and yeah. I appreciate that. But I am all for removing <laughs> parents that take you sports too seriously. Get them out. 
eject them early. Make an example. Or like, you know what? Honestly, Squid Game's it. Yes. <laughs> Targets on all the parents the whole time. You got one more strike. You got one. Yeah. No strikes. No strikes. Yeah, let's put a scoreboard up for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you cuss at the umpire one time. I'm not mm-hmm. saying murder you, but at least give him a cone of shame or something. Kick him out. Give him a warning. Yeah. Get a life, yeah, man. Yeah, but the ones that kicked out, that get kicked out, do not leave. No, they hang out in the parking lot. Yeah. They're like, you can't tell me to leave. This this is public property. Yeah, it's yeah. free country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to watch from my truck. Yeah. And then again, maybe, and to which all of this, my son would say, well, at least they came to the game, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The games are on Saturdays. <laughs> I make all the Thursday meets. <laughs> I know that that that's my trigger. When the meet you're coming to and flying out after gets canceled, you're like, I've had this on my calendar for months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ugh. It happens. Parenting is very hard. And I think that's the, the subject here. It's mm-hmm. it's not it's not good or bad. It's just all all of the emotions. All right, guys. Uh, we got a couple more holiday horror stories to get to. Fantastic. Send us emails at don't make me come back there gmail.com today. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this one is from Jake. Dear Dustin and Melissa, I love the pod. Hi, Jake. By far, you two are the most consistent every week uh, out of anyone I listen to, and we backseaters are all grateful for you. There you go. Uh, this is a good warm-up one. A while back when my brothers and I were in high school, my mom was an in-home caretaker for an elderly lady. This particular year, it fell upon my mom to have the Christmas holiday shift. Me and my brother spent Christmas sitting in the back room, eating room-temperature pizza, and watching The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Not the most glamorous Christmas for sure, but not too horrible either. At least we could uh, be there with my mom while she had to work. You guys are the best. Jake. I like that one, actually. Aw. Yeah, it's, like it, it's got some heart mm-hmm. to it. I like that. We spent a Super Bowl at the rec center one year. Remember? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not exactly Christmas, but yeah. Well, I just remember it. Yeah. Like, we just like brought food down because you were working at the rec center. And yeah. They didn't close for the Super Bowl. Unconventional holidays. Love yep. it. I think mm-hmm. they turned the music up, up downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey. Yep. Okay. All right. So this one is from Betsy. Hi, Betsy. My story is around a gift from my mother-in-law. I always thought my mother-in-law liked me pretty well, but about 10 years into our marriage, she gave me a gift that made me really wonder. Okay. First off, let me say that I'm not necessarily a tchotchke type person or really a precious moments type person either. <laughs> but this particular Christmas, I opened a gift from her, thankfully not in front of her, And it was the Precious Moments glass donkey that was part of a nativity set. Oh, no. You can see it, right, in your mind? I opened the rest of my gifts. crying? Yeah. I opened the rest of my gifts. (laughs) They're always the sad eyes. You're so sad. (laughs) I opened the rest of my gifts, and there were no other parts of the nativity. (laughs) So I thought this was probably the first installment in what would be a series of gifts over the next years to grow this nativity scene. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) <laughs> Never seen received one other piece of nativity scene, just the donkey. Oh, my family no. loved refers to it as my glass ass. <laughs> <laughs> Never asked my mother in law about it. When she died there, I wonder if we would cool. find all the additional pieces in her attic. Nope, it's a mystery. Although maybe not. It does make a great story though. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. I remember at one of my siblings, they after their wedding, which was over Christmas, they did that brunch where you open all your wedding gifts. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. And the day after the wedding. It's high pressure. And they opened a whole nativity set that was like 12 boxes. Yeah. Oh. And what does a, a young 20-something couple <laughs> want but 12 boxes of nativity? That doesn't even know where they're going to live in the next year. They're like, yeah. great. They're like, yeah. oh, wow, but well, we got this. Yeah. We wanted a toaster, but we got this. Yeah. <laughs> It's you, could, you, couldn't yeah. got, you couldn't have got a toaster. Yeah. Like you use every day. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably half off because it was after Christmas. Yeah. I don't know. What I'm saying is you don't need a nativity scene. No. When you're newly married. But what about one glass donkey? <laughs> what about, will that do? It says so much. It does, so yeah. Much. Uh, Fragile. It, yeah. <laughs> uh. In the midst of everything going on in your holiday season, how about this right here? Tell your Democrat friends how much you yeah. love them. <laughs> here's a, actually, here's a question before we do the last one. Um, is December the busiest month of the year for parents? I think it rivals May. Yeah. But I would say yes. Yeah. 
Uh huh. Mm-hmm. There are a couple marquee times in the year where mm-hmm. it's displayed how much busier your life is as a parent, as a non-parent. And I think December might be number one on that list. I, December is- Second m- is the ahead. end of the year. End of the year, so yeah. May. Dads and grads. December, May, and uh, like back to school. Yeah. So like August, September. December is yeah. insanity for parents. Mm-hmm. Every day you have at least one- Extra commitment for every child that you have. Yep. At least mm-hmm. one extra. You got a lot of meetings. So you many got, meetings. Um, you got to bring cookies. Yeah. You got a pajama day. You got grades. Yeah. Um, you check got a, ups. You got a secret sick. Santa. You got to get gifts for the teachers. You got to get gifts for the coaches. Uh huh. G- gifts, gifts for, for, gifts the, for the children. <laughs> gifts there's so. <laughs> gifts for the lists for the grandparents. Yeah. Yeah. Gifts for the therapist. You have to tell your grandparents, uh, okay, uh, what do you, what do they need? Yeah. And then you got to figure out like something that's like surprise, but not, you know. (laughs) You're budgeting. It's end of the year. Or you're like, I already got all the gifts, but now so-and-so is going to give you this one. You might be planning a trip. You're going through your Christmas card list, Mm -hmm. you know, like, oh man, forgot they died this year. Uh (laughs) <laughs> and then work gifts, yeah. And then work socials, and then parties, yeah. And travel, and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's insane, and yeah. December for uh, December for parents is honestly probably harder than the journey that Mary and Joseph went on with <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it is hard to find a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I look at the story of the birth of Christ and I'm like, I mean, you had it good. You, you had it good. You went on one journey and there was transportation available. And oh, there was no room at the inn. Yeah, get in line. Mm hmm. Reservations are sold out. It's so busy. It's very relatable. Yeah. Yeah. The animals around were actually just relatives. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The. <laughs> and, and around. Around like the fifth recital, you're like, hey man, not every kid needs to be encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if there's twenty solos, maybe we gave out too, too many, many solos. solos. We gave out too many solos this year. <laughs> not, you know. Just like top five. Yeah. Just let some kids be good at math, man. <laughs> Let the science kid be the science kid. Let the piano genius play the peanut solo. Mm-hmm. And for the Somebody's love, got a jingle bell. And for the love, <laughs> please don't let your eleven-year-old wear that much makeup. Please, <laughs> please. It's it's upsetting for all of us. No one is comfortable in this environment. It's every every every. What it is is every extracurricular needs a party yeah every mm-hmm. extra extracurricular that your child has has a thing in december there'll be like a summer camp thing that's due in december for some yeah you're yeah, playing, you're yeah. already you're yeah. like yeah. i got signing up for spring ball right sp- now yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm like, got a got a text for the coach yesterday it's, like hey yeah. is he in i'm like yeah, yeah. spring yeah, yeah you also have to <laughs> register for high school and middle school and kindergarten yeah and college yeah in December. Not to mention planning yeah. your family's Christmas trip or hosting or a meal. Taxes. And then you get an email. They're like, yeah. don't forget to book your summer travel. And you're like, screw you, Delta. I am. <laughs> I don't have time for this. I don't got time for this. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Talk about a nutcracker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last one. All right. This is from Isaac. Big friend of the podcast, patron, whole thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't say his last name. Coast Guard Isaac. Uh, I have a holiday horror story. It was during the time that I was stationed in Hawaii in my last full year there in 2022. Uh, for context, Isaac is a Coast Guard in, in the Coast Guard mm-hmm. in Hawaii. I had plans to be home for Christmas and New Year's, as did other siblings of mine who lived outside of Oregon. I had booked my flight about a month and a half beforehand so that the prices weren't as bad. And I could, we, it's too loud downstairs. There's no way so we can loud. get the, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the podcast. All right, thanks for <laughs> listening to the podcast. You're the best. Hey, folks, want to give a special shout out to our as essential as oils patrons. Ooh, that's $25 up a month. That's a big money right there. 
what you get is you get a special shout out on this podcast at the end right now. So first up, April Griffiths. Adam Bush. Allison Nelson. Bonnie Galindo. Carrie Teague. Caroline Crimmins. Code to Grow. Courtney Eibling. Damaris Diaz Stevens. Dan and Chelsea Morell. Daniel Owens. David and Melissa Cox. Dave Hoagland. Isaac Teron. Jason White. Jennifer Ashley Downs. Jessica Handerand. Joshua and Nikki Platt. Jordan Lara. Jordan Cowan. Juliana Smith. Lori Amos. Matt and Sam Slazdom. Nathan and Jennifer Merritt. Nicole Caros. Rachel Wilson. Rachel Kennedy. Robert and Nellie Capen. Steven Menya. And Tiffany Payne. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank bum, you. Bum, 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 bum.